going on everyone? Today we have an exciting video for you. We will be installing some recessed lights into an existing ceiling where there is no attic access. I don't have any other video like this yet. I'll also be hooking up some brand new power to my light switch over here because the current wiring setup is just ridiculous. Now I know the walls behind me are bare and exposed, but that does not need to be the case for your house. You can do this where you have sheetrock up as well. The system will still work. I'm tired of using these lamps in here to get light, so it is time to get some recessed lights. If you're new to this channel, I am renovating a cabin in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina in the purposes of hopefully renting it out through Airbnb or some other short-term rental means. I heard you can make some decent cash that way. So this is the room right next door to the guest room that we'll be working in. I've already installed the recessed lights here and I did that just so I had it down before creating a video so I didn't stumble through it. I have tons of videos on how to install recessed lights so if you're looking for the tools I've used, if you're looking for exact wiring and all these kind of like nitty gritty details, you can check them out on all those other videos. This one will be pretty detailed but I won't go into how to hook up black wire to black wire, neutrals to neutrals, ground to ground, and so on. But I'll also have a list of all the tools and materials down in the description below, including the Torch Star recess lights that I used here. They're 3000 lumens and four inch in my case. I've used them in other rooms, so I'm just gonna keep going with them until I find a problem with them, which so far hasn't been the case. And you got a good look of what the end result will be. Let's get to work. Okay, so I've already measured out my locations here for my four recessed lights that I'll be putting in here. I don't wanna bore you with any of that because every room is very different. If I measure 32 inches from my walls, that's gonna be completely different from your room. There is a free website where you can go on to punch in the dimensions of your room and it'll tell you generally the layout of the lights that they would recommend. Website is free to use, I'm so out of breath. I will have the link down in the description below. Again, just punch in your dimensions. My room here is 137 by 137 inches. And so I'm bringing my lights in about 32 inches. You just simply measure that out like this. 32 by 32. 32. So once you get the general location of where your recessed lights are gonna be, just mark it with some painter's tape temporarily. From there, you wanna make sure that that hole will not be located where a joist or rafter, a joist is going to be a ceiling joist because a recessed light can't go there if there's a ceiling joist running through your ceiling. Now you could do that using a stud finder. So go over the, the painter's tape with your stud finder and make sure that there isn't a beam within three or four inches of that hole. If it just so happens that the spots that you marked are located just under your joist, move them over a couple inches in the other direction, in a direction away from that joist. And once you move one side of the room, let's say two inches to one side, you're gonna to wanna to move the other side two inches to that side so your room stays symmetrical. You don't wanna just move one light over here and one light over there. It would look way too random. Now, before we actually get into the action, there's one more thing to take note of. Your joists usually want run in one single direction. So you have a channel like this. So if your light is here in between two joists, that way you have the ability to run wire from the one hole through the joist channel all the way to the other hole. You probably need a battery. Let the dust settle, you know? By the way, I tested my ceiling for asbestos using this little kit I got off of Amazon. I'll have a link for that video right up here if you want to test out your ceiling for asbestos. But I'm gonna spray down around the holes just to make sure that the dust doesn't really float around the whole place. It just kind of drops into the bowl I have. You can use this if you don't even have asbestos just to keep the air kind of clean. I did have a piece of cross bracing blocking my path, so I had to squeeze everything up to drill a hole here. This is rare. Okay, so the setup here used to be really weird. There was a light switch here, 
and it ran a cable, just a black and white, just a hot and neutral, no ground, a cable through the ceiling. I actually have the cable dangling still right here where I cut it through the ceiling and over to an outlet over here. And what that switch would do would toggle the outlet to turn on or off. So there would be a lamp hooked up to this outlet over here. Actually, there still is a lamp hooked up to the outlet. But I've now made that outlet just a constant hot outlet. It's no longer toggled by this light switch. And so now I'm working with no power over here. So what I did was I have a light switch right here that goes to the utility room behind this, the laundry room. But I ran power from this light switch over and back down to right here. So now I have power, ground, everything I need to power this light switch. Now I need to run a fresh pair of wire cables up through the ceiling and over to my recessed light holes. Now a lot of you probably already have a light switch somewhere in your room that's not connected to an outlet. So this was all is probably just all an extra step for you, probably not interested in it. So I've already done it anyway. I'm not gonna necessarily show you how, but I just took the power from this light switch that was already here. You can take it from an outlet that's already somewhere else too, like I did in the other room. Ran the power, so now I have, let's call it a brand new light switch right here. So let's run some wire for the recessed lights. So what you wanna do is you get your wire. I'm using a 14-2 here, Romex, and I'm gonna curve it so it's curved towards my hole behind me. I need to get as close as I can. If you have drywall up, you'll need to cut out an access hole so you can drill through the sill or use a hole that's already there like I'm doing. Just keep shoving wire up there and eventually enough of it will start getting coiled over towards this direction. put my light box, my light switch box somewhere around here. So I just need to make sure I have a ton of extra cable coming through here so I can work with it later. All right, my first light is ready to be wired now. But I'm gonna do all the other lights first. Now we're gonna run wire from light number two, what I'm calling number two, over to light number one. Or you can do it vice versa. This part right here, where I'm connecting light two to light three, is where you'll just have to follow me in concept. So I was planning on doing this exactly like I'm going to explain to you, but I thought about it last night. How can I do this without cutting through my sheetrock, without cutting through the joist on the ceiling or drilling through it? Well, I have an exposed wall here, so in my case, I'm gonna cut th holes through my studs rather than through my joist and through my sheetrock. Now, if your whole place is encased with sheetrock, what you'll have to do, and it's still quite simple, although it seems daunting, it seems tedious. Here's light one right here, or light three. There's a joist right here. And then there's a joist here and a joist here, all the way to this light. So there's three different joists I would have to drill holes into. So that's what you'll have to do is you'll have to actually cut out sheetrock and what I would recommend is cutting a whole strip of sheetrock all the way from light three to light two and save that piece of sheetrock. So you cut it out then you drill your holes through the joist just like I'm going to drill my holes through these studs and then you run your wire across. Now you have one giant piece of sheetrock which is better than making like a cheese hole situation up there where you have a bunch of little small patches because when you do a big patch it fans out the patch so you will never know it's ever there. That's really the only way to do this in existing ceiling with no attic space. The other alternative is getting an extension drill bit, a really long drill bit that you can drill through this far. Now they call that blind drilling. If you have pipes, if you have other wires, if you have things like that, it can be a huge mess. It can be very dangerous. So I don't recommend that. And I'm not even sure how you fish the wire through all those tiny holes, but that is a method I've seen. This method is a lot easier, especially if you're not scared of any sheetrock work, or if you have someone coming in to do sheetrock for you, it's actually not that bad. Again, luckily for me though, I'm gonna drill through my sill, whatever that's called, up through here, and then drill through my studs. 
So that's another option you can always do too, is come through your walls and come over if you feel more comfortable sheetrocking a wall than a ceiling. So I have like a half a dozen videos on how to actually connect these and wire them up so I'm not going to go into too much detail but you grab your two wires there slip one through this knockout connector one through this black to black white to white green to green the wire connectors that they give you are pretty small they're only meant for like if you were to just hook up one light since I'm connecting three wires together I use these yellow ones um, just make sure that they can hold whatever gauge wire you have and that's how I do it. One thing I've been doing differently as of late with these recessed lights is after I've got everything wired together, I tape this box shut just because it's just hanging off of a little groove. Like that's how it's fastened together. It's not screwed together or anything like that. So just adding a little bit of electric tape uh, just helps hold it all together. Here's my hot, my power. This one is still on right now. I haven't turned it off at the breaker box. Remember to always turn your power off at the breaker box when you're actually working on it. Here is a old work junction box that, or light switch box. This is what I'm gonna install once I get the sheetrock up. So I'm not gonna officially install this yet, but I'm gonna run the wire through it anyway. So you just punch these out a little bit. I need two, cause I have two wires coming from the top. So I'm gonna punch out two of them. Right, so there's my light one. Now I need to turn off the breaker so I can work with this one here. Okay, everything is off. You should test it with a little electric voltage tester. Strip your wire back about three quarters inches or so. I'm 14 gauge, so I'll just read 14 on here, strip them off. Put your grounds together, get your neutrals together. These can be tied off already. Okay, so tie up all your grounds together. I'll put my hot up top. And then I'll put my recessed light wire down bottom and then my ground to the ground screw here. To wrap the wire around the screw the same direction you're going to turn the screw so you flip that around like that so when you twist the screw it'll fully twist the wire in the right direction Boom. snug all right everything looks good now i just gotta hook up the lights Let's test it out. You know, 
don't need to turn the breaker off box to hook up the quick connect, so I'll just keep going. Oh, quick connects. I'm so glad I have three batteries because I'm just blowing through content right now. <laughs> In just a couple of hours, we went from one lamp, one small window, to this, which looks much brighter on camera than it actually is. It's a very natural 3000 lumens in here. So just to recap, you run the lights in a circuit. So I have light one, light two, light three, and then four over here, and you just run them in a, a sequence, circuit, whatever you want to call it. I avoided running wires through my joist because I have open walls here but I still had to run them through studs. In your case, if you have to run them through the joist, you will have to cut your sheetrock out to get it there or get an extension drill, but that's really long, but you have the risk of cutting through pipes and other wires. Something I didn't mention about the location here, you don't want them too far away from your walls. So whatever the tool tells you, if it's over 35 inches or so, I'd be cautious about putting it that far away. These lights shine in a cone pattern. If they don't have a wall to bounce light off of, it's just going to be a spotlight on your ground, on your floor. So I put mine about 32 inches away in this case, in this room, but I've done it from 25 to 30 before. And it just means that the light will then hit the wall early and reflect a lot of light into your room. If you put them too close to the center, if I just had one light in the center, it would just shine straight down. And you don't want that. You want the light to bounce off your walls. Another thing, these lights here from Torchstar, I've used them in my movie room, which I'll have a video out on that soon. I've used them in a couple of other rooms, guest rooms. They are 3000 lumens. In this case, they're four inch lights. They've worked perfectly so far. They're even dimmable if you'd like, and they just look great. I'll have a link to them down in the description below, just like all the other tools I used, even the wiring down there. It's much cheaper on Amazon than what I found on Lowe's. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, this whole thing is about a remodel on a cabin in the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina for Airbnb or short-term rental potential. You don't wanna miss any of it. I'll see you soon.